Welcome to a video on the surface area of revolution using polar equations. The goal of the video is to determine the surface area formed by rotating a polar curve about the polar axis or theta equals pi over two. So if r equals f of theta is differentiable on the closed interval, then the surface area formed by rotating the graph about the polar axis is equal to two pi times the def integral from alpha to beta of r sine theta times the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. Remember the polar axis would be this axis here. So it's like rotating about the x-axis. If you remember we had a very similar formula for parametric equations where we had y here instead of r sine theta and we had the arc length formula for parametric equations instead of the arc length formula for polar equations. If we rotate about the line theta equals pi over two, that would be the same as rotating about the y-axis as we see here. And remember in parametric form we had x as our radius, but now we replace that with r cosine theta. And then again the arc length formula is written for polar equations rather than parametric equations. So these formulas can be derived using the same formulas that we talked about using parametric equations. But for this video, we're just gonna take a look at an example. So we wanna determine the surface area formed by the rotation of r equals sine theta about the polar axis. So here we see the graph of r equals sine theta. If we rotate this about the polar axis, we would create this solid, as you see here, which is called a pinched torus. So we want to determine what the surface area would be of this solid. So we're gonna use the formula for rotation about the polar axis as we see here. Let's go ahead and see if we can set this up. Now we do want to make sure we have the correct limits of integration here. Now we do need to be careful about these limits of integration. Even though the period of the sine function is two pi radians, Notice that this entire circle is traced out from zero to pi radians. So our limits of integration are from zero to pi. Just to be sure about this, we could make a t-table. If we let theta equal zero, r would be zero, so we'd be at the pole here. But notice when theta is pi over two, sine of pi over two is equal to one, so we're already halfway around the circle to this point here. And then when theta is pi, we'd have the sine of pi radians, which is equal to zero, so we're back at the pole. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest. Our integrand will be r times sine theta times the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. Well, r is equal to sine theta, so we'll have sine theta times sine theta times the square root of r squared, that'll be sine squared theta plus dr d theta squared. Well, the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, so I'll have cosine squared theta d theta. We're fortunate here because notice our radicand is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, and that's equal to one. So this simplifies very nicely. We have our integrand just becomes sine squared theta Now we will have to apply the power reducing formula for sine squared theta. Let's go ahead and do that. That's gonna give us one minus cosine two theta divided by two d theta. And now we can go ahead and simplify these twos out. So we're left with pi times the def integral from zero to pi of one minus cosine two theta d theta. Let's go ahead and evaluate that on the next screen. So we'll have pi times the antiderivative of one would be theta. To integrate cosine two theta, we'll have to perform u substitution, where u is equal to two theta. So du is equal to two d theta. So that tells us that d theta is equal to one half du. So the antiderivative of cosine two theta 
is going to be one half sine two theta. So when theta is equal to pi, we'll have pi minus one half times sine two pi. Well, sine two pi is zero. And then when theta is zero, these will both be zero. So the surface area is equal to pi times pi, or pi squared square units. Let's go back and take a look at our solid. If we rotate this curve about the x-axis, it produces this solid that has a surface area of, of pi squared square units. That'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching.